Good morning, guys. I thought we'd share a little bit of lathe work today, using some of this quarter inch stainless steel bar stock to make a tang nut for the end of a chef knife handle. Uh, this is gonna cover some basic lathe operations and we're going to especially take a look at the Jacobs Rubber Flex Collet Chuck, which is a super nice bit of kit to have for this little kind of work. I'll be showing a lot of stuff on this video that's pretty basic lathe operations. So if you already know this stuff, please just hang in there. But um, a lot of this video is kind of directed at folks that haven't seen this stuff maybe or are just getting a metal lathe and kind of learning what projects they can use it for in knife making. So right here I'm going ahead and showing, changing out a D16 um, back chuck and then putting it on and showing tightening it all up. You want to tighten it on like you're tightening the lugs when changing the wheel of a car so that you get everything centered up when you tighten it on instead of getting it lopsided. This is the Jacobs Rubber Flex Collet Chuck. It's got a locking ring here. So to take the collet out to swap it out or clean it or whatever you might want to do, unsnap the locking ring and just counterclockwise unscrew the chuck hammer ring until this threaded collet nose comes out and uh, it's got a little bit of schmutz so just get that with a rag real quick that's pretty good and then this here is actually the, the rubber flex collet so it has these steel fingers. These collets are typically hexagonal on the outside and they fit into a tapered cone on the inside of the collet body. And uh, this part is rubber in between the teeth. So when it's tightened back into that cone um, with this collet nose, it gets drawn back in evenly concentric with the body of the collet chuck, which is really quite concentric with the spindle. These give you very good repeatable tolerance, especially compared to a three jaw chuck or something. And uh, very good for small stock, like my 10 inch bison three jaw won't grip stuff below, I'm gonna say quarter inch very well. This collet set will allow me to grip stuff down to a 16th. Quarter inch is a very common size to be using in this. So for this tang nut, we're gonna need quarter inch stainless rod. This is just from a hardware store. It's non-magnetic, so although it's not specified on the stock, it's gotta be 300 series, I reckon. It doesn't machine that nicely, but it does okay. And you get to get this lined up to where it'll begin to thread in there. when you spin the call it chuck hammer ring here. And this is like a, a lot like the rigid pipe machines if you use those. They have a quick change chuck with a, a hammer ring like this. So you snug it up until the part is snug. Um, but then once you get there, you can use this as a hammer to really sock some grip onto the part. Then when you have that, you can just let this spin freely until it gets to the closest spot that locking ring will pop over. And now it's good to actually turn. It's got really quite good grip. So we're gonna spin it up and do some operations now. Here we're gonna be at 453 RPM with a just kind of auction find brazed carbide cutter nothing fancy just um facing the end off flat so we can get a nice accurate shoulder on the nut and start a drilled hole accurately you know so here we go sorry guys i just noticed that the vibration of this lathe while running will jiggle the camera around so i'll be fixing that on the next video but please put up with it in the meantime
nothing to it. Now we're just going to take that cutter off the tool post and get the tool post entirely out of the way for the rest of the process. I'm even going to snug the um, carriage up against the headstock a little bit to kind of get it out of the way. Now we want to chuck up in the three jaw chuck in the, in the uh, tailstock there a center finding bit common way to accurately start a hole on the lathe and uh, three jaw chucks are only so accurate they're always going to have some run out but you can reduce that to a, a decent extent by gradually tightening the chuck from each of the three chuck holes it actually makes a pretty good difference and we're going to crank the bit on over close to the workpiece, start the spindle up. Grab some oil and have a drill at it. And there you have it. Usually I'll go until I just start to see the countersink from the outside of the bit begin to show up on the end of the drilled hole. Pull this guy out. And then we're gonna go with the next drill bit, which is our tap sized drill bit. And we're gonna tap these for 10 by 28. So this drill bit is a number 20 wire size drill bit. Spin this back a bit. And try to locate everything, like the tailstock position, for instance, so that I have to change position by dragging that heavy tailstock around as little as possible, but then also not have an excessive amount of. tailstock quill poking out from the tailstock, an unnecessary amount. Okay, here we go with this. And we're done with that step. I've drilled this hole to a depth of 5 16 The tailstock quill has got a scale on it, so you can see, at least by fractional inch, inch how deep you're drilling things. 5 16 inch on these, and then we're going to remove the three jaw chuck from the tailstock. We're going to put in a live center now we're going to get a tap and a tap handle with a center on the back of it this is a 10 by 24 thread tap this is a coarse thread and uh, I have modified this by taking a broken taper tap and grinding it into a bottoming tap so it has just some taper on the last couple of threads. But it'll thread almost all the way to the bottom of that hole that we put in. And we're going to put this in here like this. This goes on the live center. And we're going to gently crank the tailstock forward until we're getting into the hole there. Apply just a tiny amount of pressure. You don't want to break any tap teeth. Get it engaged in cutting. And... Uh, Give it a little bit of oil, keep advancing the center and the tailstock bit by bit. This just keeps the tap centered when you're starting the hole. After you get in there a few threads, the tap is well aligned enough that you don't need that center to guide the tap handle anymore. But this is a handy way of tapping on the lathe. 
and this is, as I said, 300 series stainless most likely, so it doesn't machine, drill, tap any of it very well, so we just need to baby the tap, keep applying oil, don't advance it too much, retract it a lot. because this thing will snap in a heartbeat. And then you have not only a ruined tap, but you gotta start the part over because there's usually no getting it out of there and it's not worth the time to even try to do is cut the part off and drill a new one. I'm taking a minute and just tap this all the way to the bottom of that blind hole. That'll give us several good threads to catch with the end of the tang. And now, when you want to undo one of these chucks, you just pop the locking ring out. And uh, lefty loosey, counterclockwise, you unhammer the chuck to open up that collet. Easiest thing to do there is just blow this thing out with the air nozzle. with the porta band we're going to cut about an inch of this off so this is now our workpiece quick deburr on the 1x42 Now a screw slot is all that remains. So here is my favorite way to put in a screw slot at the moment. I like to use a square collet block, 5C collet block, a quarter inch 5C collet. Screw the cam lever onto the back here to get it prepped. And we're gonna put this in here with the blank end out where we want to cut our screw slot. My porta band cuts too narrow of a slot since the blades are pretty thin, but I have a 35 thou thick blade on the big band saw here, so it cuts a nice flathead screw slot. So now I've got this set up to where it's gripped tightly and uh, I have a flat surface to index to the bandsaw table. And we'll just have a cut at it. And I'm just eyeballing this in. And that's all you really need right there. Unclamp. Take that out of there. And now we have, for all intents and purposes, a finished stainless barrel nut for the tang. Well, it's not really a barrel nut. This is kind of a half of a barrel nut. It's a blind nut. And then this sits up against the bottom of the counter bore in the actual handle block. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the short format video. And I'm going to endeavor to do a few more of these in the future, just focusing on specific little techniques instead of um, entire journeys through a knife build. So we'll see how that goes. Stay tuned.